Working here at Bletchley Park, one of the characters you come across very early in the story, of course, is Alan Turing. When he arrives in 1939, is made part of the team that is attacking German military Enigma. This is a cipher system that the German armed forces are using. And Turing, within months, makes really important contributions, firstly to the understanding of the Enigma machine, and secondly to devising methods of breaking it. Of our educational resources that we give to schools, still the very most requested resources on Alan Turing. His story, had he not undergone the tragedy that he did, would already have been absolutely astonishing because there was obviously a lot more to the man. I would say ultimately he was defined by his sexual orientation because that was the basis on which he was castrated. In 2009, uh, the Prime Minister at the time, Gordon Brown, issued an apology uh, for the treatment of Alan Turing. And then in 2013, he was officially pardoned, uh, exonerating him completely. So to learn that relatively recently you could go to prison for being a gay man, you could have your work discredited, you could ultimately lose your life. I think that that's an extremely shocking story for young people to hear. And of course, for that reason, it's a very important one. It's phenomenally important that LGBT charities are able to access national lottery funding. I think uh, historically LGBT charities have been underfunded in other ways, so the importance of these funds really can't be overstated. I got interested in Anne Lister a good while ago, got more interested in her diaries and her writing, uh, especially her as a mountaineer, hill walker, traveller. Of course, it all kind of exploded when Sally Wainwright's BBC drama came out, Gentleman Jack. Anne Lister was born in 1791 in Halifax. From a very young age, she started to write a diary. So her diaries run into over five million words. She wrote about one sixth of the whole diaries in secret code. So she was able to talk about the things that really interested her, but also things that she wouldn't have wanted to write in plain English. She was after a Scottish noblewoman called Sibella Maclean, and the two of them met here in Edinburgh. They spent several weeks here, and thanks to the diary of Anne, we can now take Anne and Sibella as our guides to go through the city, following in their footsteps. We managed to make an application for the Heritage Lottery Fund. We're absolutely ecstatic when we achieved the £10,000 grant that actually enabled us to get the tours off the ground. To have the voice of a woman from that era is really important, even in our time now. So I think seeing somebody being so true to herself and being so authentic can still inspire people today.